Welcome on in, everybody, here to the Auburn Undercover Podcast, Auburn Undercover YouTube channel, Nathan King and Jason Caldwell. Outside Jordan Hare Stadium, I don't know what time it is, I think it's pretty close to midnight. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, after that uh, it's past that, that right. flag throwing fest that we just witnessed. Yes. I, it was, yeah, and scoring some points, you kind of knew that game. It's good, I mean, it had everything but a rain delay. Um, but Jason, good first performance. Obviously, Hank Brown was, he, he had all the eyeballs in this game, he was the one everyone was looking at. 17 to 25 as Auburn wins this game, 45 to 19 over New Mexico, 235 yards for him and four touchdown passes. Um, no turnovers is a good place to start, especially out in the rain, especially after they what they saw um, against Cal last weekend. So, I mean, we learned a little bit from Hugh Freeze tonight, kind of about his thought process with the quarterbacks, and uh, it was a week obviously we were really focused on the quarterbacks. Yeah, we did. We, one thing we learned was we talked about what it sounded like on Monday, mm-hmm. and that was enough. Yeah. Um, he said, I made the decision Monday, but he didn't tell anybody until Friday. And so he'd already made up his mind that it was going to be Hank Brown. And um, I thought he was, and, and, I, and I wrote about it tonight, but I uh, heard Camden Brown say, calm and collected. And yeah. that's what I saw. Now, obviously, you're not playing an SEC defense, New Mexico defense, not real good. But we saw a guy go through his progressions, check down, take some throws underneath. Do the things that we talked about. Hey, we said play within the framework of the offense. I thought Hank Brown did a pretty good job of that. Um, threw a couple of really good deep balls. Um, spread around 10 different receivers, four different guys caught touchdowns. I thought for a first game, really, and first opportunity to play with, with the number ones at all, I thought it was pretty solid. Yeah, I mean, as you brought up, I mean, he doesn't have as much experience with these guys in practice. He has the most besides a guy like Peyton Thorne. And that's something Hank talked about after the game. He said, look, I've been preparing like I've been the starter. Um, a guy who, you know, was a three-star recruit, was committed to Liberty. He said he never lacked any confidence that he would be able to start at Auburn. We talked about it this week. You know, he's known Ken Austin forever. He's known Hugh Freeze forever. But he wasn't satisfied with this yeah. performance. You know, he left some he left some passes out there in the rain, I think, was, was, was part of the issue. Um, but he said he kind of felt like, when we were talking to him after the game, he got maybe a little bit of the mistakes out against an opponent like this. Because as Hugh Freeze said, moving forward in Arkansas, there's no reason to believe right now anything is going to change. Um, he's going to continue to start against the Razorbacks, and we'll see what they do from there. You know, and I thought something else, too, t- tonight was I thought we saw some pretty good adjustments from the offensive side of the ball. Uh, you know, New Mexico came out and did some things really different than they had seen them do, and it took them a little bit to kind of get it figured out. Once they did, they re- thought they ran the ball really well. I thought Jarquez Hunter did yep. some good things. Demari Austin, uh, Jeremiah Cobb, and they did that while rotating some guys on the offensive line. We saw Dylan Wade move from starter at left guard to start at right tackle and played left tackle in the second half. We saw a little bit of true freshman. We saw our man, Dre, was in there. Um, he got a chance to play a little bit and, and did a good job. And so they got some faces in there. Braden Joyner was in for a lot of those yep. scoring drives in the second half. So um, I thought they, they answered some things in the running game. I thought that was a good step for them. Obviously, it, it, it ramps up a lot when you get to Arkansas next week, Nathan. But I thought offensively, there were some things that, that you can build on the other side of the ball. Yeah, um, it's a rough night. A lot of questions. Yeah, I mean, you look at, again, we talked about this last week with Cal. Like, they had those issues, and then you look up, and until the end of the game, they'd only given up 14 points. Um, New Mexico goes one of three on fourth down in this game. I think that's big. You miss field goal at, at one point in the game. They they did a decent job holding them. Red zone-wise, yes, pretty good. Yes, red zone-wise. The bend don't break. However, it was some of the same concerns you saw against Cal. Um, you know, only 50% Devin Dampier, only 50% of his passes he, he completed in this game. Five of them were for at least 20 yards. Lots of chunk plays. Um, Jason just, I mean, busted coverage a, a couple times. Just guys running wide open there without Kane Lee. Yeah. That's really big. Otherwise, they shuffled some pieces around. This is secondary that um, they are going to see a better version of this kind of right. a team next week Absolutely. when Bobby Petrino and Taylor Green come. Yeah, no, it's going to be it's going to be different. And I thought I thought Dampier did a good job of scrambling extended plays and basically throwing some guys open. I thought he threw yeah. some balls up. It basically all the DBs weren't turned around. The receiver made a play on the ball and they made a couple of those plays and made some of those things happen. The the biggest thing for me still continues to be the interior defensive line. There still was really little to no push from that interior defensive line. Um, did do a great job of stopping the run. Um, and so to me, that's still the concern when I look at this defense is the things that happened were created by a lack of pressure. When And you can't blitz a guy like Dan Pierce. So they had to just basically play straight up. And when they couldn't get to him, when they couldn't create pressure, then there's guys, he was able to extend plays. Yeah, and you, I mean, you saw sometimes that pressure did pay off. 
I mean, the the interception with Antonio Kite, Keldrick Falk just annihilated yeah, the right correct. the right mm-hmm. side. So I mean, sometimes those individual efforts. Um, but yeah, that that crush in the pocket was what Free said a couple weeks ago. Got to get more consistent. You brought up Jarquez Hunter. You the statistic in the in the preseason reaching 20 carries. Yeah. If people don't know, this was the first game in Jarquez Hunter entire career that he had 20 carries in a game. It's his second most yards in a game. As you said, I thought they did a good job of. You know, last week the the running game was. A little iffy. They yeah. did a good job, and then they got backed up, and then the turnovers. This was a good job of adjusting. I think Auburn and their fans and Hugh Freeze want to see them get consistent running the ball. I thought this was you – know, New Mexico's a bad defense, but this was a good job of adjusting and seeing a guy like Jarquez Hunter go out there and show what we know he can do. Yeah, and then that's it. They're going to have to be able to run the football. That's part of this offense. That's part of the RPO system. You want to throw it, but you throw it based on the looks you get. The more you run it, the more those looks you're going to get to be able to throw the football. That will help out Hank Brown as much as anything as he heads into to week number two as a starter. Talk real quickly, Jason, about we talked about in pregame, the potential for them to get Elijah Melendez. Yeah. And then about an hour after you recorded our video, they got him. Talk about what Auburn gets in their newest commitment. Yeah, physical linebacker. Uh, spoke to him for a few minutes before the game, and, and Christian talked to him after the game. And, uh, just a guy that I think he wants to play in the SEC. Uh, DJ Durkin's a guy that he really likes. and. He, this is a different type of guy. This is a physical linebacker, you know, 225, 230, a guy that can really get after it. And so when you start talking about that kind of guy to add to this defense, when you think about Demarcus Riddick and, you know, DJ, some of these guys they've got that are freshmen in this group, really big addition for them to add to another piece of this uh, 25 class. I think cameraman Christian almost getting run over might be a decent might, might sign. Might be a good time to call <laughs> we it can, a night. We can go ahead and call it. 45-19 uh, to 19, Auburn wins against New Mexico. Pull away from what was a plucky team here in a very rainy Jordan-Hare Stadium. It was good to see the students have some fun with that yeah. on uh, what, was, uh, what was a very rainy night. And so for Jason Caldwell Nathan King, we'll be back with you guys this week. Of course, talk about the SEC opener against Arkansas. Until then, we'll talk to you soon.